because we have not faced reality, because we as a people live in a world of fantasy. And once we face reality and use religions properly, and once we understand how they are used by other people, and once we separate, not so much as separate, spirituality from religions and understand that out, out of our spirituality came the world's religions and that we have been naive and let people take from us the basis, the elements, make religions and come back and sell them to us. Once we understand that, and that we had a much better version of the same religions before their former creation, then once we recover from the shock of discovering that we had something better than what was sold to us, rehashed from our elements, then go back and take the great spirituality we had and move with it. And once we understand what we were and where we are, we will understand what we have to be and where we still have to go. We are still thinking minority when we were never a minority. But we are letting minority people fool us into thinking minority. And we are literally being controlled by minorities who endear themselves to other minorities by demonstrating their ability to control us. And they control us by manipulating images through politics, religion, in the mass media. All right, the subject admittedly is dangerous. As religion is a delicate and dangerous subject, and it's even more delicate and dangerous when you're talking to people of African descent. Because where religion is concerned, we are a purist people. We are the true believers. We out Pope the Pope and out Muhammad Muhammad. <laughs> we believe in things in its purest form and we actually believe things are exactly what they say they're supposed to be. We have a humanity that actually makes us believe that people believe in democracy and the inventors of it don't believe in it. And we had democracy before they think they invented it. And when they invent a fake version of it and sell it to us, we accept the fake version and neglect the genuine democracy that we have been living all along. Not only democracy, but humanity. And the least significant event would be the so-called discovery of the new world. The greatest event in the history of that period would be really the Africans and the Arabs, collectively called Moors, would lose their hold on Spain and be pushed out. Be pushed out of Spain and they would lose the Mediterranean. They had blocked Europe in the Mediterranean. They had forced Europe out of the Mediterranean and they had forced Europe into the Middle Ages. Now Europe had discovered longitude and latitude had come out of its box. 
They'd gone back to sea. They had learned maritime, some maritime techniques from school, from the school at Salamanca, that the Africans had translated the information from Spain. And they would turn on the very Africans who translated it for them in the very Arabs. The fight between the Africans and the Arabs would facilitate the rise of Europe. But except had the Africans and the Arabs got together at this point in history, fighting over various interpretations of Islam, they could have stopped Europe and stopped the slave trade, but instead of stopping the slave trade, the Arabs went into the slave trade, disgraced Islam, disgraced themselves, and left the African without protection, something which we should never forgive. Right. Right.